Okay, so I've been watching a lot of lazy game reviews lately. It inspired me to take a crack at restoring this beast. Uh, it's been sitting in my closet for a while. Picked it up at a local Goodwill. As you can see, it is an old portable computer. It says right there, portable. Ugh, this thing weighs a lot. Now, I don't know much about it, and I haven't been able to find much about it either, online. Uh, the only brand I see on it is uh, Welcome, or Welcome, or some other pronunciation that I'm not getting. And uh, I looked this up, and I just found a couple of random references to computer, uh, like, history exhibits and that kind of thing, but I couldn't find much at all uh, in terms of manuals, uh, or marketing materials or anything like that. Uh, so I don't know, maybe Wacom just made a keyboard? I don't know. Um, but the model number is LCD-88 Portable Computer. The 88, I think what it means is uh, the 8088 processor because I saw a little bit of a reference uh, to these machines and they seem to suggest that it had an 8088. So if this machine really does use an 8088, that makes it pretty interesting because that chip was the same uh, chip used in the original IBM PC, the 5150, which was introduced in 1981. If you've been using PCs for a while, you might be familiar with things like the Intel 386 or 486, even the 586. You might be wondering, wait, Intel 8088, shouldn't it be 8086? Well, actually, the 8088 was a cost-reduced version of the 8086. It was actually software compatible, but it only had 8 uh, data lines instead of the 16 of the 8086. This made it cheaper, and it also allowed it to interface well with the existing kind of mature I.O. chips and peripherals of the day. you got to remember, back in the 80s, the landscape was dominated by 8-bit computers like the uh, TRS-80, Commodore PET, and uh, things of that vintage. So, the market was flooded with 8-bit uh, accessories, so it made a good match. So it makes angry noises, and nothing shows up on the screen. It does light up, which is nice. Just the contrast, nothing happens. I don't even know what this does. But, I've actually hooked this up to an external display, and it does seem to work. You can see it accessing the hard disk here. That's a cool wind down noise. So over here, uh, we've got the uh, old style keyboard connector. A VGA out, which I've already tried. It does seem to work. Parallel port, and looks like a game port. Uh, not much around the back. There's an FCC ID and something something microsystems okay so I couldn't find anything on that FCC ID uh, on the right side we've got the uh, 5 inch floppy drive 5 and a quarter and a big old Seagate hard disk the screws are a bit rusty which is not a good sign. Uh oh. Okay. The cable to nowhere. I can smell the vintage electronic smell already. I can see a bunch of socketed uh, modules. That's most likely either uh, RAM or cache. Okay, so copyright 1987, 19, 1988, uh, copyright 1991, so 
about that time. We'll take a closer look at this later. Okay. Achieve. Made in China. Now at this point I'm realizing that the machine is an IBM XT clone. And the XT, along with its clones, uh, share a common fault, and that would be the motherboard is very bare in terms of I.O. Almost everything has to be added by expansion card, except for the keyboard. Of course, uh, expansion slots are, are very limited, and uh, what people did is they put as much as was humanly possible on one expansion card, and the thing you just saw me pull out there is one of these combos. Uh, you can see the uh, ribbon cable going off to the floppy drive on the left there, uh, so there's a floppy controller built in, that's that Zilog chip uh, you kind of see on the bottom left. There's a real-time clock with its backup battery and a couple of serial UARTs. This card also handles joystick and parallel port functions. A couple mod resistors there, very nice. Copyright 1986-1987 and copyright 1986. I don't know what this is. Looks like a switching power supply or something like that. Very strange. Bunch of discrete logic. I'm not very familiar with computers of this exact vintage. Uh, my first computer was actually uh, a Windows 95 box. Uh, I think it was a Pentium. Yeah, it was a Pentium. Uh, 8 meg RAM, that kind of thing, uh, from Packard Bell. So this kind of stuff, I just caught the tail end of. Okay, so here's the power supply. Not much special about it, completely unlabeled. Max Flow by Super Ultra. Yeah, just a standard uh, PC power supply of the day completely unremarkable except for this little sticker. It says, warning, this is a protective label. If tampered with, customer must purchase this tape. Uh, okay. What, why do I want the tape? Okay, so here we are back at the computer. And uh, right away, I noticed this little beast. As you might be able to see, it is an AMD P8088-1. Uh, this is actually the fastest 8088 that I think you can uh, get. Uh, it's running at 10 megahertz. Uh, the Intel one, I think, only went up to 8, although I stand to be corrected on that. So this might explain the turbo button, uh, or light, uh, on this machine, because uh, a lot of software back then was written assuming a particular speed of the processor and uh, you know if it was running faster especially kind of a non-standard speed like this AMD part you might need to slow the works down to get it to work properly uh, the 8087 coprocessor is not populated but uh, I might find one later. Uh, this is supported by this 10 megahertz turbo board, apparently. Uh, we'll take a closer look at the actual main board uh, once I get it out. So there's a couple instances of random electrical tape action going on. Oh. <laughs> I hadn't noticed this. If you look. Whoops! Hooked it up with the wrong polarity at one end. Ah, doesn't matter. We'll just uh, exchange the, uh, the wires in the middle of the connector. We've got green and white over here and green and black over there. Uh, sorry, couldn't see that. Anyway, that's different wire colors. I think someone's been in here. Now as for where that random wire is going off to, well, it's the uh, drive caddy. So uh, 
Look at this beast, huh? Well, I say big, but I think it's only 20 megs or so. Let's see. And there's an error map here, but I don't see the dimension printed on it. Um, yeah, the error map well, it doesn't look like it has any errors. That's nice. Um, you know, these drives, uh, if you had a bad sector, I don't think they actually remapped the sector like the like normal drives do. You know, if a normal drive encounters a problem with one of the sectors on the on the drive, it'll actually transparently remap it to another healthy sector so that uh, no one will know the difference. And uh, I don't think these do that, so you've got a little table here showing what's what's messed up, but it looks like there's nothing here. Oh no. What have they done? Really? Yep. <laughs> They've just tacked on this random wire <laughs> to the hard disk activity light. Uh, you see the little activity light there? They just tapped off of that, gotten it wrong, and decided to flip it around midway through the cable. Ah, uh, jeez, at least they did a proper strain relief here. Ah, uh, man. What do you think this is? It's a little SIP, like resistor network or something, but it's socketed. Did you, like, take that out and replace it? Right, I'm gonna try to free this drive from its wire-based prism in a minute. Uh, this is the floppy. I think it's a pretty standard uh, five and a quarter inch made by Copal. Probably still works. You know, at least the soldering is reasonably done. Doesn't look bad. You're free. And I get the feeling that this machine didn't originally come with that motherboard. It might just be me, but anyway. Okay, you see this wire over here? Okay, look at its colors, white and black. Now if I yank on it, that wire over there moves. That one's white and blue. What manner of horrors await us underneath here? I'm not entirely surprised that the LCD isn't working. Ugh, jeez. I'm ragging on this, but these kinds of hacks you know, they're great, you know, people modifying technology to suit their needs. That's something that people need to do more of, not less. So, lest you think I'm actually mocking these folks, eh, you should look inside my computer. I do it all the time. It's just kind of funny, though. Because you got to believe that they, like, assembled all this thing without testing. Oh, yeah, we'll just, you know, stick a... Stick an LED wire in there and it'll, it'll all work out. Power it up and the light doesn't work. Ah, well, we could take this entire thing apart. Or, you know, we'll just... bodge the wires together. It'll be fine. So... This ugly beast... deserves a bit of a closer look, doesn't it? So yeah, this is a 20 megabyte drive. Uh... Again, here's a part number, ST225. It uh, spins at uh, 3600 RPM. Can sustain a data rate of 5 megabits per second. That's not megabytes. Uh, so less than 1 megabyte per second. Uh, but I guess if you've got 20 megabytes capacity, that's not so bad. Uh, it has a stepper-based seek mechanism. Uh, which gives it a stunning 65 millisecond seek time. Uh, for comparison, modern drives don't actually have a stepper drive. They just have an arm controlled by a couple coils and a big magnet, and uh, those are much faster uh, times uh, breaking the one millisecond barrier for a modern drive. But, uh, you know, I guess uh, back in the day, this was pretty good. Now, uh, I'm starting to get a little worried. And that's because I don't see any obvious video cabling going to the LCD at this point. 
Okay, so here's, uh, where'd I put it? Somewhere, there's a graphics card. Here it is. There's a graphics card. We didn't unhook anything from it. It's just sitting there, so I don't know. Maybe the video signal goes through uh, one of these connectors here? Uh, that seems a little strange. Let's see what surprises await us now. Okay. Well, here's the board. Anything on the back? Classic uh, routing of the time. Whole bunch of tracks going in uh, uh, up and down. And then across on the other side. It's just how they did it back then. Yep, as expected. Nice little hack. Nice. Okay. Here's the LCD module. The front panel lights and the like, so I'll set this aside. Okay, that's enough for this video. Uh, the next one will cover the electronics in a bit more detail, looking at the circuitry and chips, and that kind of thing. And then uh, we'll reverse engineer the LCD and uh, maybe get something displayed. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next videos.